in general last week, and that's 5th District Congresswoman Kendra Horn. I sat down with uh, Congresswoman Horn this morning in her office. She uh, reiterated that she sheds no tears over Qasem Soleimani's death, but she makes the point that both Presidents Bush and Obama chose not to take him out over concerns of possible retaliation. She says we don't know if President Trump is right in his belief that killing Soleimani will prevent American deaths. What we do know is it's inflamed tensions and that administrations of both parties had made the decision that an action like this would not make us safer, but it would increase the risk to Americans. And uh, Congresswoman Horm says for her, the bottom line is, are we safer now than we were before? And certainly that is in question tonight as we learn more about these uh, missile attacks in Iraq. At, live at the U.S. Capitol, Oklahoma Zone, Alex Cameron. Alex, thank you. Now to see the president is monitoring this situation. He has been briefed. What do we know about the severity and the impact of these attacks? Well, first, Nora, a U.S. military official confirms to CBS News that a rocket attack was launched against the al-Assad air base northwest of Baghdad a short time ago. One administration official says there are no reports of casualties. About six uh, rockets were launched. There are also uh, a, apparently an attack on the U.S. consulate in Erbil, north in northern Iraq. In that case, two rockets were uh, supposedly launched, and there are no reports of casualties in that attack either. Earlier, Iranian state television announced that its Revolutionary Guards were conducting a missile attack on al-Assad uh, air base in retaliation for the drone strike which killed Qasem Soleimani. So Iran, the government of Iran, appears to be taking credit for this attack. This, if that is correct, then this was not just another rocket attack by a Iranian-backed militia in, in Iraq, which may or may not have been acting on its own. This, according to that announcement by Iranian state TV would be an attack ordered by the government of Iran against a base where U.S. troops are located. In fact, and that's question. an important, right, and that's an important point, David, that, that you point out because some of these uh, rocket attacks have been carried out by proxy forces in the past, but we are now hearing from the IRGC that their aerospace unit uh, launched this attack with tens of ballistic missiles on the al-Assad military base in the name of martyr General Soleimani. Um, so they are claiming responsibility. And of course, this follows the news uh, reporting that the Ayatollah, Iran's supreme leader, has said that he wanted Iran's forces to carry out such an attack. They're using the word missiles, uh, which is uh, significant, uh, because they have missiles which have sufficient range to reach uh, Baghdad and west of Baghdad from Iranian territory. We don't have this confirmed yet, but it is entirely possible that this missile attack was actually launched from Iranian territory, not just uh, ordered from Iranian territory, but carried out from Iranian territory. The next big question, of course, is what will the American response be? And that remains to be seen. And that is the frightening scenario that presents itself tonight. Uh, not only um, the health of our U.S. service members in Iraq, there are some 5,000 serving uh, in Iraq, a number of diplomats as well. We are told the president has been briefed on this situation. Uh, earlier today, the president in the Oval Office said that the U.S. will fight back will retaliate. Uh, the Pentagon also saying today in a briefing with their defense secretary that the U.S. is prepared for such an attack. I want to bring in Holly Williams because she is in Iraq tonight in Baghdad, which is how far would you say, uh, Holly, from uh, this air base? Yeah, Nora, that base uh, is about 100 miles 
uh, northwest of here. And as you were saying, rocket attacks on Iraqi bases and U.S. bases uh, here in this country are fairly common, generally carried out by uh, militia groups with backing from Iran. But this is, uh, if those Iranian state media reports are true, is qualitatively uh, different. For I, th I think for a lot of Iraqis, this really is the nightmare scenario. We were speaking with the Iraqi Prime Minister's military spokesman today, uh, General Abdul Karim Halaf, uh, and he said his fear was that Iraq will become a battlefield, a battleground for a proxy war between uh, Iran and the U.S. And when you look at it, that does now seem to have come to pass. Firstly, with the assassination on a Baghdad street of Qasem Soleimani, uh, and now with this apparent uh, missile attack uh, on a base that houses some of the 5,000 U.S. troops that are here in Iraq. And the significance of the Al-Assad Air Base, why the Iranians may have chosen this air base, bear base, Holly, if you would. I mean, we know that this is the base that President uh, Trump visited in December 2018. Vice President ben Pence was just there in November. It's a sprawling, uh, a sprawling base that the U.S. has spent hundreds of millions of dollars helping to develop, correct? Well, I think that's exactly it. It's a big base. Uh, it's an important base. It's a base that, that the U.S. has spent uh, an enormous amount of money on, uh, and it's somewhere where uh, American troops are based. And for all of those reasons, uh, it was probably an attractive target for the Iranians. All right, Holly Williams in Baghdad for us tonight with this breaking news. We are learning that the president is following these developments from inside the White House. Weijia Zhang is at the White House. And Weijia is the president, I imagine, gathered with his national security team. And what comes next? Nora, that's precisely what he is doing right now. He is consulting with his team, and that is the question, because earlier today he certainly did not mince any words, and he couldn't make it more clear that he was prepared to launch another attack if he deemed it necessary because officials were bracing and they knew that this was a real possibility. And certainly the game plan does not begin now. They've already been drawing it uh, because they knew uh, with the uproar that was unfolding in Iran and, and throughout the Middle East um, that they were expecting something to happen. So now the extent of the retaliation is the question, and that is certainly what Democrats on Capitol Hill are questioning right now, too. Now, you know, it's important to note that they were already extremely skeptical and questioning whether that uh, strike on Soleimani was justified in the first place. And this week, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi uh, is planning to uh, uh, issue a, a vote to uh, limit the president's military actions on Iran. We know that Vice President Mike Pence has briefed Pelosi on this attack, and she will no doubt be uh, you know, sharing some information with um, Democrats as they uh, try to decide how to proceed with whatever President Trump comes out and says he is prepared to do. But again, we heard from him, we heard from other members of his cabinet because they really wanted to send the message, Nora, that they were ready to uh, fight back if Iran were to do something. Right. You mentioned that the president saying today that if Iran does anything that they shouldn't be doing, they're going to be suffering the consequences and very strongly. Could this include, Ouija, attacks against Iran's cultural sites? Well, you know, that is what he vowed earlier. He even put it in writing, and it uh, said on Twitter that he was targeting 52 sites in Iran, which included cultural ones. Uh, and so there was a lot of pushback from both sides, uh, from both parties, because that would be considered a war crime under international law. Well, today, President Trump apparently found that out, and he walked it back, saying, quote, if that is what the law is, then I like to obey the law. And so perhaps when he tweeted that out, he wasn't aware of that because, uh, you know, his advisors and other cabinet members were actually scrambling to try to defend what the president was saying because it is against international law. So at this point, we don't know what he's considering, but again, um, he has been thinking about this, mulling over it for days. 
All right, Weijia, thank you. And to that point, let's return to the Pentagon because David Martin is there and has been talking to his sources all day. The defense secretary today that they have increased their force protection postures, that they are prepared. And of course, David, the U.S. military always has contingency plans in place, correct? Correct. But let me read you a statement we just got from the Secretary of Defense. At approximately 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, Iran launched more than a dozen ballistic missiles against U.S. military and coalition forces in Iraq. It is clear, this is important, that these missiles were launched from Iran and targeted at least two Iraqi military bases hosting U.S. military and coalition personnel at al-Assad, that's west of Baghdad, and Erbil, which is north of Baghdad. There, <clears throat> there is no uh, battle damage assessment yet. Uh, this statement makes no reference to uh, American casualties. And it talks about uh, the possibility of a response. So that's what's on the table, Nora. All right, uh, David Martin mentioning that news from the Secretary of Defense and the Pentagon that Iran has now targeted at least two Iraqi military bases hosting U.S. military and coalition personnel at both al-Assad and Erbil. This has been a dramatic escalation in what many feared might happen. So our coverage will continue on our 24-hour streaming network, CBSN. You can also watch it at cbsnews.com or on our CBS News app. There will be more on your local news on this CBS station. Many of you will return now to regular pro programming. For some of you, the CBS Evening News is next. This has been a CBS News special report I'm Nora O'Donnell, CBS News, Washington. For news 24 hours a day, go to cbsnews.com.